connection is timed out. Try again. Hey, good morning. Um, this is our beginning class on uh, biblical Greek. And uh, welcome to uh, first class. It's going to be worthwhile. And let me um, share uh, our, there it is, our syllabus. I'm not used to sharing stuff like this all the time. So it's just a little new for me. Um, our textbook that we're going to be using, which I already sent that out on the syllabus for that, we're going to be using uh, Ray Summers' Essentials of New Testament Greek. Um, this is this is not the exact textbook. This is a revised new version, been revised by Thomas Sawyer. Uh, but this is this is what I really um, really learned Greek on, and I know that there's some people that think that this is old and antiquated, and that there's definitely a ton of new uh, books out there. Um, but uh, I find the simplicity of this, and that's what I like. I, some of the other books uh, just, to me, are kind of complicated, and I'm just trying to keep this simple at the present time. Uh, along with this, there is a workbook, which I also rec would recommend that you get. And I couldn't find this new on Amazon. Maybe I was stupid, <laughs> but um, you can find this if you go to uh, Christian Book Christian CBD. Book Distributors, CBD, um, this is available, and you can get a, uh, a paperback copy, even, I believe, of this. This and of the Essentials in New Testament Greek. So that's the textbook. In addition, at some point, uh, the, the textbook does have a very, very short a list of vocabulary terms in the back because it's not going to cover everything. So you have these vocabulary terms, page that they're on, and um, the occurrences of the words. But at some point, you're going to want to invest in uh, a lexicon. And I have some listed on some lexicons that I re would recommend. Um, this, is, this is a very handy one. Uh, some people would say it's antiquated, but Thomas Sheldon Green's uh, Greek lexicon, you can, you can see that up close. It's what it's going to look like inside, and I don't exactly know what format it's being printed or who's printing it right now, but I did see that you can still acquire these online. Uh, and uh, when these were bought, I bought this one for two bucks used, uh, and I've had this one for over 30 years. And very handy for just keeping things around. For some people, this is antiquated, and you'll see why in just a little bit. Um, this is actually my favorite lexicon. This is my go-to when I'm in the office. Uh, this is uh, G. Abbott Smith. I believe his first name was George, but everybody calls him G. Abbott Smith. This was printed in 1921. So this, this one, by the way, was printed, was done back in the 1800s. This one was first printed uh, 1921. Uh, and uh, it's a little bit more in depth than the previous one that's there. This is what it's going to look like, but you can still acquire new copies of this. Um, printed in the 80s is a shorter lexicon. Um, there is a big one called uh, BDAG, uh, Bauer, Danker, Arndt, and Gingrich, which is over on my shelf, and it's a, it's a much heavier volume. You can see this is very small. This is like a short version based on that that was revised by Frederick Danker. And also, I find this one to be very helpful. Uh, um, so these, this is, these three I keep on my little shelf uh, right here on my desk rather than over on the shelf where I have to kind of actually almost get out of my chair to kind of reach over to get them. Uh, but I keep all my Greek tools and my Hebrew tools close so that I can grab them. I don't want to have to walk across the office because those are the tools I use most of the time when I'm studying. Having said that, having said that, um, I'm going to uh, share, uh, let me see if I can pull this up here. Start a share on this and see if it, I think it came up, there we go. So this is my phone. 
Um, and you can get um, this uh, parse Greek app that you see down there in the bottom left corner on the screen. And it allows you to uh, practice uh, parsing uh, of verbs, uh, nouns. Uh, well, you parse verbs uh, and then you're looking, or uh, parse words, excuse me. And this happens to be a def, uh, definite article two here. And so you can go through and you can look at that. And, it's, and you can load different things from different Greek classes that are being taken. And then this is also from the New Orleans ba uh, Baptist Theological Seminary. And you can, they have word lists. And so you can pull up Greek. And for you right here at the very beginning in the first lesson, you can look at the alphabet cards. And so there's the alphabet card and you can just look at them like that, or you can tap on it and it'll say, oh, it, this is the letter beta, B as in better. And then you swipe and so on and so forth. So um, these are these apps and you can pull up here, like uh, here are flashcards and there's the verb akuo. And you can tap it and to I hear, a cool I hear, and swipe ice uh, into, and there it goes, into, and so on and so forth. So uh, you can do flashcards uh, on your phone. And uh, that's helpful. When I went through, I don't have my Greek stack. I was asking my wife, I think that they're in my, I think they're at the house because I, I haven't used these for years, but we used to have these boxes. And I think this was like 25 bucks or something when I was in seminary, which when you're a poor seminary student, it seems like you're going to break the bank to buy those. And so you had stacks of these cards that were in here, Greek and Hebrew. And uh, I don't know if my wife remembers this, but I usually walked around. I usually had a, had some stack, maybe not quite that thick of vocabulary words that I was working on. And I was always carrying them around my pocket. When you had spare time, you pulled them out and you flipped through these. And, uh, but they didn't have parsing cards that not, at least not that I remember uh, finding. And so um, you had to, those, those you, you filled sheets with, which we're gonna talk about that before we're done. So let's go back over to our, so those are, so what I'm trying to say is, um, with this, um, well, let me let me let me share this one more time here. I didn't finish sharing what I wanted to share on this when I was sharing these these um, apps. Wake up there, there we go. Um, if you have a Bible program and, and just about anybody, free or for a very nominal cost, you can download a Bible app on your phone. And so here's one, and I pulled this up last week because I was talking to somebody and I didn't have my Bible. My Bible is in the car, but you can tap on this. And so let's uh, here in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, and you can see in mine, I have uh, the ESV in the top half and I have uh, Nestle's, Nestle Allen 26 Greek text in the bottom. And so we can tap on this word right here. You can see it's highlighted. And then in the background, we get a dictionary definition. First, we have just a very brief definition that would be like you'd have in a Strong's Dictionary. And then below that, we have um, uh, William Munz's from his Greek dictionary. Uh, we have a little bit more developed definition and then some other key texts. And then you can also do a search on that. And I can look up the lexeme, which is that, for, that particular form that I'm looking for. And I can go through and I can find that word in all those places. So, I mean, these are things that were not available to me when I went to seminary. Uh, we were paper people. Uh, that's all that was available to us back then. So let me go back over to our, um, to our Greek class syllabus. And uh, so those are some of those. I, I showed you three of these. I don't have my suitor here in the office. That's over at the house. And uh, my Barclay, I do not have a separate Barclay Newman uh, dictionary. Mine is at the is a fixed. It's a, it's an appendix uh, of a Greek text that I have. So, but those are all recommended as just very brief, and that's what they are. They're very brief uh, lexicons to help you do that. But you also can have access to that through something on a phone or an iPad or on your computer. Um, at some point, do not worry about this right now. Uh, because you have a little ways to go in learning Greek, but I really do believe that, and I figured this out in seminary after my first semester, 
that if I really was going to master Greek, I needed to quit following along in an English text. In fact, actually what I was doing, uh, what we did in the seminary is a lot of seminary students owned uh, an interlinear. Now I preach with these just because it makes it easier, but what it is is it has an English text in the margin, and then it has, this one has uh, Nestle Allen text, and I think it's uh, the 21st edition, I don't remember, with uh, English translation underneath that was done by uh, uh, Anglican minister by the name of Alfred Marshall. Uh, and uh, I, I still, I, I like this. I have a different one that I use for some Bible studies. That's the one I use on Sunday mornings. Um, and we were using that, but it's kind of, it, it's, it makes it easy to cheat. And so what I ended up doing was um, deciding I was just going to follow along in a Greek text. So if, if, if my professors were teaching uh, English Bible, whether it was in theology class or whether it was in a Bible class, uh, I just decided I was going to follow along in Greek, even if that meant at times that I was just barely keeping my head above water. I just, I needed to do that. I don't know if that's what helped me, but by the end of my first year, I felt like I was kind of really getting the hang of Greek. And I had taken Greek before I went to seminary. I had taken a semester of Greek in uh, college, but I didn't master it very well at that time. And I had fumbled with an interlinear for a long time. I still, the interlinears are still good. I'm not trying to now say they're not good, but they have limitations. So down below here are those uh, apps, Flashworks by Munts, uh, Parseworks, uh, Parse Greek, and then the last one, the New Orleans Baptist Theological Seminary Vocabulary Flashcards for Greek and Hebrew. And so those are some that are good. There's also, I just mentioned a couple quick Bible programs. Uh, that you can download on iPad, uh, your i or your phone, I should say your phone or a tablet, or on your computer. Um, I'm not a Lagos guy. I started with Accordance before I ever knew there was a thing called Lagos. This is the more Lagos is the more popular one, but Accordance uh, is it, is very powerful. It's an equal equally powerful program to Lagos, and it's what I use. Um, almost every day. If I'm in the office and I'm studying, it's what I use. I have paper tools like I showed you, and I do use those, but I use um, I use a lot of the tools uh, on accordance. And so those are available to you at some point, uh, um, but they can be very expensive. I'm not for sure, but I think if you buy the entire Lagos package or the entire accordance package of everything you need for Greek and Hebrew and such like that, with all the, with all the extra tools, Seriously, I think you're looking at like $8,000 or something like that, or $5,000. My program, I started off my accordance years ago. Uh, I had somebody in the church that really wanted me to, to buy it because their son used it. And he gave me $200 to buy it because that's what you could get into it for, for the, for the Greek and Hebrew package. And I've updated a few times and it's cost me a little bit to update. I probably have now, I'm going to say eight or $900 worth of tools and upgrades on accordance, but I'm a long ways from, but I'm not gonna download all those other tools. I'm not interested in reading a bunch of stuff on my Bible software like that. So all that to say, um, I, I wanted to give you an inch, uh, I wanted to illustrate something here. And so let me do another share here. Um, where are we right here? I wanted to share that there is, uh, when we're talking about the value of learning uh, Greek, biblical Greek, and so I hope, hopefully you can see this, hopefully this came up, because I'm not able to see this on my computer, uh, but um, I did this study on Sunday afternoon, I was filling in for somebody, and if you went to uh, Ephesians 4.32, it says, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave or is gracious with you or was gracious with you. And if you looked at that, you'd just say one another and one another. But if you have access to Greek, and this is, in, like I said, with things on your phone, you can look this stuff up. But what I wanted to point out is that, see, there's value that the most important thing you can do in learning the Bible is to read it. This is the one thing people don't do. People don't just read their Bibles. We go out and buy tons of books about the Bible, but we don't read the Bible. Reading the Bible is the most important thing you can do. And 
I've read through the Bible several times and I read through it regularly, but I'm just amazed how many times in reading again that I'm like, how have I missed that? I must have read that passage 20, 30, 40 times over the years. How have I never noticed this before? Uh, and so just reading it is important and reading in large sections and reading in context. But having said all that, when you're reading the Bible and studying the Bible and all with, with all these English tools, you're always depending on other people. And even when you're using tools, granted, you're doing that. But if you have access to the Greek or to the Hebrew, then also it allows you to really be a student and dig more yourself. And what you'd find out if you came to Ephesians 4.32, is that the first part of this says, this is a verb, you become to one another, kind ones and compassionate ones. So kind ones, but it's to one another. And we have this word, ale las, in this case, ale loose. And then, it, then we change to a participle down here, that's ones being gracious, and we switch to the, to the pronoun haautas, in this case, haautois. And you'd say, why is this here and here? And a lot of people, Bibles, you can see here the translators, the ESV, they don't think that there's any difference. And there is a difference. And you can do this. In fact, I went through uh, with a class on Sunday afternoon and demonstrated that there is a distinction between these two terms. And this is within a group. And this is reflexive. This is something normally in almost all occurrences. There's, there, is a con there is a situation in which this word has a different preposition at the beginning that it it can mean tightly within a small group. But this, but there are two different pronouns in this pronoun. So the first part of this is saying be kind ones and compassionate ones to one another. The second one is being gracious with yourselves, which I'm not here to teach a Bible study, but I believe this problem, this issue, a lot of times hangs on and I think that's why he has a participle here for being gracious, that it hangs on your being gracious with yourself. When you're gracious with yourself, you're going to find it's a lot easier to be kind and compassionate towards others. So I just wanted to illustrate here very quickly that this is why uh, for us as believers, as we're, if we learn Greek and we learn Hebrew, uh, we actually can take more responsibility for doing the legwork, I think, that's necessary for us. Uh, in studying the Word of God. Let's go back to our, let's go back to our, uh, our Greek syllabus. Uh, Greek is a very old language. It began about 1300 BC, so it has been around for a very, very long time. Um, uh, in the 300s, Alexander the Great, which probably most of you uh, uh, know about Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great conquered uh, uh, this vast uh, section of land going all the way to India and, uh, uh, and over towards Spain. And uh, one of the things he did was he imposed the Greek language. Uh, and so the Greek language in particular, and this is important for us, Koine Greek. Now, prior to that, the Greek had been Attic which had to do with the region around Athens and Corinth and such. And so it was a, it was a, a more formal Greek. Koine Greek is kind of like, this would be like here for us, there's like a formal English that you have to learn if you're gonna write uh, a, a, a textbook or a, a thesis or a, or a dissertation. You'd use a formal English and there's rules and, and, con and convection, conventions of language that you're supposed to use. Koine Greek is kind of the common language. It'd be like for you in English, it's the common language you speak on the street. It involves colloquialisms. It involves all kinds of metaphors and such. Uh, not that Attic Greek didn't have those also, but it, this is just common Greek. It's not a special form of Greek. And Koine Greek actually continued to about the sixth century AD uh, in, in the Eastern part of that, of what was that empire, even after Rome had uh, conquered the Grecian Empire, had taken over that. So this is this is this language. It's the language that was spoken by Jesus if, when he spoke Greek, and there is evidence that Jesus did speak some Greek in situations. It's the language that Paul spoke. Peter and the other apostles spoke that. I mean, if they did, they had to do business in the world. They didn't just speak Hebrew and Aramaic. They actually spoke Koine Greek. 
Um, part of part of learning another language, I think, is not only just learning vocabulary and uh, uh, the different parts of speech and grammar and such, but as you're doing it, you're picking up idioms. You're going to be recognizing things. It'll take a while for you to ever get to this point, but it's one of the things that you realize you're kind of, as you're learning another language, you're learning to think a little bit like them. You're kind of learning to take their worldview. And that's very important because it's one of the biggest challenges when we're trying to read the Bible is we read our worldview into theirs and impose our worldview on there, and we need to learn to see the world the way they looked at it at that time when they were writing and understand their idioms. And I always, this was one, this was an idiom that we have when, when you sit at the table and you're telling your kids, you set the food out in front of them and stuff that they love, and you tell the kids, go ahead and eat up. But the Greeks said, eat down. <laughs> now, why they said eat down and we say eat up, I don't know, uh, does that mean because the food's going from the plate up to your mouth, or is it looking at the food going down on the plate for them? I don't know, but it's their idiom, uh, and it, you're going to come across things like this that are just going to be very interesting the way and you learn things and uh, try to pick this apart. Um, vocabulary. Almost every lesson, except for the first couple lessons that we're going to go through here, is going you're going to have vocabulary that you're going to have to learn, and so that's why uh, you're going to have to find some way to review vocabulary. And there's a lot of different ways to review vocabulary. I don't have lined paper here with me. I, this is what I used. In, I didn't use blank paper in seminary. I used lined paper. Yeah, my wife here, she has a book, lined paper like this. And I used to just fill these with vocabulary terms, practicing over and over again and uh, doing things like that. And, um, or, getting an app on your phone that'll have vocabulary words that you will need or making your own flashcards. But I don't think uh, flashcards are even particularly necessary. In fact, one of the apps on there is called Flashcard. And I think it's like a $4 app. And on your computer, you can create a um, database of, verb, of words that you want. And then you can just load them on your phone and you can create your own flashcards with Flashcard like that. And uh, so you can make your own. Um, we're also going to be, you're going to have to eventually be learn, learning paradigms, paradigms, uh, which are examples of how words change form. And uh, this is one of the things with Greek that you will learn eventually. I don't want to make a big deal about it today, but that Greek is an inflected language, meaning that Greek, the words change to express who's doing the action. Now, we kind of do that in English because we say, he has, we have. So there is a change sometimes between a plural and a singular, but Greek changes whether you're saying I or you as one individual or he, she, or it as, as one individual or we or you as pl a plural group or they. And there's different endings for all of those in there. And nouns change to tell you where that word can fall in a sentence, how it can uh, relate to other words in a sentence. And so you're going to have you're going to have to be learning paradigms. And that sounds complicated. Uh, it just takes some work, but it's not that bad. And then the other thing that we're that I'm going to try to be doing as we go through each one of these is I'm going to have to we're going to do a brief review when we get to these on English grammar with relate to each one of these because. That's one of the things I found even when I went off to seminary is even though I'd gone to college, my English grammar was, well, let's put it this way, it stunk. Uh, my understanding of it, my, my wife is always amazed that I was able ever able to pass uh, um, college uh, English with how poor some of my, my grammar skills were. I used to get A's in, in school in English, but to actually sit down and write a, a cogent paper uh, that made sense in English, uh, I could have good thought patterns, but the grammar is disgusting, uh, and uh, which is really sad. And I learned English grammar by learning Greek, amazingly. Okay, so now let's move to today's lesson. Today's lesson, and this is all you're going to do, is we're going to work on learning the alphabet. And I'm just going to skip down here. This is, this is your assignment page. You don't have to print this out. But I, would, but I would recommend that you have a piece of paper, go through two or three of these, or take line paper is even better. I did this. Um, when I graduated from high school, I received 
the old red cloth version of this book. And my first week out of high school, I learned the Greek alphabet. So I knew that before I went to college and took a Greek class. And one of the things I did in there was I just took lined notebook paper and I just practiced the alphabet and sit in a chair. It took me five minutes, 10 minutes every morning. I would do that before I went to work. And uh, it was actually pretty easy. And you're going to find that this is probably one of the easiest lessons you're going to have uh, in this whole Greek class. But that's that's the worksheet. Um, and what you're going to do with that worksheet is you're going to uh, write the and I'm going to have you just focus on primarily on the on the the um, small letter rather than the capital letters on this. There are we do have capital letters in your Greek Testament, but you're going to find out most of the language is written in small letters, and they didn't necessarily start sentences with capital letters like we did. Uh, so you're going to write that. So you're going to write that letter then you're gonna write the English equivalent and so on and so forth, back and forth, but not just writing it, you're gonna say it. And um, I don't know if any of you know this, and I don't remember if it was Harvard or Yale, but in the last few years, they did a study and they found out that students that actually in class take notes with pen and paper versus taking notes on a tablet or on a computer, that they are they, they dramatically remember the material they're working on better. Uh, and they think it's because there's more muscle work that's going on. There's more act, there's, you're using more senses and more activity to learn this. So that's why I think that this is valuable for you to write this out and say it. You need to say it because when you're saying it, you're using your mouth, but you're hearing it. You're actually using your, your pen to write it back and forth. And when you get done, and I think you understand what I'm going to say here by this. Um, when you get when you get done with a with a with a column, then you're going to slide a paper over the one so that you're going to have to use your memory to think, oh, uh, Aleph, that's like an A, and then you're going to write your A, and then when you get then when you come by the next column, you're going to have it's an A. Oh, A, the equivalent is Aleph, and so you're going to you're going to hide that so you don't see it. At least that's what I you can do with your hand or with another piece of paper. So let's go back up and let's look through the alphabet. And you have this, if you have the textbook, you're going to have this, uh, one of the early pages in there. So you have a place to review this. It's on uh, uh, B page one, lesson one, letters and sounds. And we're just working on the alphabet. We're not going to work on any blends uh, or diphthongs or anything like that today. We'll save those for next week or next class. So the first letter we have is Aleph. It's like a short A as in father. Alpha, what did I say? Aleph, Aleph, I'm doing Hebrew, sorry. Alpha, yeah, Alpha. Uh, so it's a short A uh, as in cat or father. Then we have beta and uh, short B, it's a B sound, just simple, basic B sound. It looks like a capital B. Yeah, and it looks like a capital B and, and uh, even the, the small version of it. Uh, and you can kind of see by the size of these that uh, Aleph, just like our A in English, would be written in the half part. If you divided a line and in the textbook does that. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah. My wife handed me her textbook. You can see how those would be written in the bottom half, where you're going to have uh, others such as the beta here that are going to go above. They're going to extend above that. And the tail is actually going to extend. Get this up here close enough. That they're going to extend below the line. Um, yeah. So beta, then we have gamma. And if you've ever done math, um, taken math classes, for some of you it may have been a while since you took a high school or college math class, but you use gamma. It's one of the letters you use, but there's the small one, kind of looks more like a Y uh, than a G sound, but it's, this is your G sound. Delta, again, another letter you're probably familiar with if you've done math. Delta, it's a D sound. Then we come to epsilon, epsilon. An epsilon is a short E sound, uh, short E sound like in pet or met. Okay, then we have zeta, zeta, and zeta is a Z sound. And you think, how come this isn't at the end of the alphabet? Because we're in Greek, not English. <laughs> so zeta, or, and it has like a Z sound or a DZ sound. Uh, and that's, uh, you're going to find out just sometimes as you learn some of these words that you can see why sometimes a, the DZ sound kind of 
fits a little bit more in the pronunciation of some of these terms more than just a straight Z. Then we come to eta, which looks like an H. This looks like an H, doesn't it? And this looks like an N, but this is a vowel. It's the vowel eta. And it's like a long, and I notice that it, we always learn this long E, and my wife always likes to point this out, long E would be E, but it's long E as in obey, okay, is the way many grammars do this. There are some grammars that do treat it more like the long E instead of the long A sound, but this is eta. And we have theta, which you can see looks like a circle with if it's a capital, but the line is in the middle of it, floats in the middle of it, it's connected in the, uh, the, small, uh, the, the small version of it, uh, uppercase and lowercase, there we go. And that's a TH sound. So just think of theta. And so like in think, uh, this is important, this is an important letter because this is the first letter for uh, the title God, a theos, God. Then we have iota, iota. This kind of looks a little bit like a backwards J, but it's, uh, and it doesn't hang below the line. This sits above the line there. Uh, uh, so iota, and, but in iota is one of these, depending on where it occurs in a word, it can have either a long sound as in magazine, in, or a short I sound as in sit. And, uh, and again, it's not, it's not going to be particularly hard. You're going to kind of find that it's sometimes it seems almost natural to pronounce it with a longer sound. Uh, kappa, uh, K sound, lambda, lambda, looks like an A missing that bar on the min, inside, but there's the lower case, which you're going to see most of the time. Uh, lambda, it's going to be an L. Mu, mu. We that now that looks like our letter M. This does not look something like kind of a, like a bizarre U, but this is our letter mu or letter mu, and it's an M sound. Nu, which uh, that one looks like a capital N. This looks like a little bit like a V, but it's the nu and it sounds like our N. Omicron, kind of you can see it looks very much like an O. Omicron is like a short O sound, as in pot and shot. What? Oh, psi is, I, I misplaced the order when I typed these up then. Yeah, this is psi is next. And this is the capital version. This is the version you will see most of the time. Fun word, fun letter to try to learn to write. It's not hard. It's just kind of bizarre when you're first learning it, but it's psi and it's an X sound. Uh, some grammars even say XS, but kind of X has that S sound on the end of it. Um, pi. Do some people say C? Some people say xi on this too. So xi or xi depends on, on how you're pronouncing the, the, the I on this sound. Uh, we have pi, again, taking math, you're familiar with that, whether it's capital or, or lowercase. Pi, it's going to be your P sound. Rho, rho, which looks like a P in both in the uppercase and the lowercase form, but it's just, this is our R. Sigma, again, uh, mathematical symbol, but this is the lowercase that you're going to see. Now, this sigma, and I've got a note on this, this is the way sigma looks in the middle of a word. When you put it at the end, it's as though the inner part of this word flips out and falls down underneath. Okay. So I think you can kind of see it's just like this inner part of the word just kind of falls down underneath there. And it's our S sound, like is in sat, okay, as in sat. Tau, which pretty much looks like a T, and it is, T is in tub. Upsilon, which looks like a capital U, and, or capital Y, excuse me, and then uh, the, the uh, lowercase form, and upsilon, and it's a long U sound, long U sound, and sometimes it's going to have a little bit of a change to a Y sound, and you'll You'll figure that out as we go, go through, uh, through this uh, tube. Uh, long, so it's like the long, and I didn't make the long U thing over the top of that. I'm sorry, but in two, but I think most of you understand that. Um, this is the first letter in the word sun. 
And it, this is where it kind of has a little bit of a Y sound. We say we us, we us, kind of sounds like a W, E, we, E sound at the beginning of it. And part of that is because there's a breathing that goes along with the pronunciation of that particular <laughs> word, which we'll learn later. Um, then we have phi or phi, um, and that's a PH sound, like in phone. You can see if you've noticed this, they don't have the F before that. This is where you get your kind of your F like sound. Uh, we have chi or key. Um, this is the first letter in the title Christos, Christ. And it's a hard CH as in chemical or Christ. And then psi or psi, depending on how people I'm, I'm going to say psi in these. Um, and this is a PS sound, as in steps, steps, and uh, or first, it's the first sound in the word suke or suke. Some some people drop the P sound a little bit more like we do in English. They're kind of we're kind of going backwards from English, where we have these silent P's at the beginning of words. But they the Greeks probably said suke, and they probably kind of had a little bit of the little the P sound blended in there with the S, and it's the word for soul. Uh, we get the word psyche from that particular term. And then omega, and you're probably familiar with the capital omega if you've ever done math and different things, but this is the lowercase omega, which is the one you're going to see most of the time. And it's a long O sound as in hone or hope. <laughs> okay. Now, again, your assignment, I've taken a little bit more time on this probably than I want to do on this lesson today, uh, overall introduction here. But your assignment is to start over here with um, the Greek word and then write the English pronunciation beside it and go all the way down through the list and uh, go refer to your textbook if you need to or refer to the sheet up above and then go and, and trying to cover up the, the Greeks so that you don't see the Greek word over there. Just look just at words, the let, letters, I letters. I'm saying words, yes, yes. Oh, I'm part of it. it's letters, okay. Um, cover up the letters and then go and write then the Greek letter next to the English letter and back and forth and back and forth all the way across. And, uh, and when, if you fill this sheet up, go and do it again. Like I said, you're gonna find it's not gonna take you long, five or 10 minutes in the morning or in the evening, whenever you have time, it give you a good opportunity to review this. And I would, I would do this for the whole next week because I, I guarantee you, if you do this every day, for five or 10 minutes every day for a week. It's not gonna have that much time. Just think how much time we waste flipping through our phones, looking at stuff on there. Five or 10 minutes spent doing this, you'll have the alphabet down. You'll have the alphabet down. And that'll make it much easier as we move into uh, the following sections. So if you went through this, you have little vowels. Okay. Yes. My wife is just, I wasn't going to have you, I wasn't going to have you do that, anything out of the textbook yet, but yes, you can refer um, in chapter one there, lesson one, you can refer to this material. It's here. You switch, flip over the page. And if you have any questions about how those letters are written, this section here is going to tell you where they are written above and below the lines, the proper places, the placement on, on a line when you're, when you're looking at those words. And you can go on down here to 1.3. Don't go past 1.3 over here on this page because we haven't gotten into any of this material over here yet. We're going to save that for the next lesson. Okay. I hope that's helpful. As you can see, I kind of stumble over my tongue, but I will guarantee you this is worthwhile. I, I use Greek almost every day, even on the days when I'm not in the office studying, I probably pick up my, I keep a Greek Testament next to my chair at home and I pick it up and just read um, from sections of it. Um, and it's helpful. And I pull up my phone. If I'm, don't go to the mall with COVID-19, but when I used to go with my wife and my daughters to the mall at different times, uh, even over the last year, and they might be looking at something that I'm not interested in, I would sit on a bench and I would pull up my Greek text, I just read the Greek text on my phone while I'm sitting on a chair and they're maybe trying something on uh, and doing something like that. So I'm just trying to, my wife's over here going, she doesn't do that that often, but there are times that we've gone and they're looking at something and this is what I've done. So I'm just saying it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a worthwhile endeavor. 
And even though it seems maybe as you're trying to start, it's always like that when you're starting trying to start something new, that the learning curve seems kind of slow at the at beginning, and it's a struggle to try to learn it. Uh, but um, I think you'll find out it's it's a worthwhile endeavor, uh, and um, I encourage you to stick with this and uh, trust that uh, we'll be helpful. And uh, if you have any questions. Uh, our next class will be Thursday morning, and we will begin, we'll review the alphabet very quickly, and then we will move on and look at how some letters are pronounced when you put them together. Um, okay, well, um, leave some, leave questions. If you have any questions, leave them below. If you're watching this on YouTube, leave them in the comment section, and uh, I will try to address those later. And thank you for joining us this morning.